If I uh, traveled into the future with you 100 years from now, how much would you be surprised if we've passed a type one Kardashev scale civilization? I would not be that surprised if there's a like a hundred year time scale from here. I mean, I think it's pretty clear if we crack the energy problems in one of the ways we've just discussed, fusion or or very efficient solar, um, then if energy is kind of free and renewable and clean, um, then that solves a whole bunch of other problems. So for example, the water access problem goes away because you can just use desalination. We have the technology, it's just too expensive. So only, you know, uh, fairly wealthy countries like Singapore and Israel and so on, like actually use it. But but if it was uh, cheap, then, every, then, you know, all countries that have a coast could. But also you'd have unlimited rocket fuel. You could just separate seawater out into hydrogen and oxygen using energy and that's rocket fuel. So uh, combined with, you know, Elon's amazing, self landing rockets then it could be like you sort of like a bus service to to space so that opens up you know incredible new resources and domains uh asteroid mining i think will become a thing and maximum human flourishing to the stars like that's what i uh dream about as well as like carl sagan's sort of idea of bringing consciousness to the universe waking up the universe and i i think human civilization will do that in the full sense of time if we get ai right and uh and 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 crack some of these problems with it yeah i wonder what it would look like if you're just a tourist flying through space you would probably notice earth because if you solve the energy problem you would see a lot of space rockets probably so it would be mm -hmm. like traffic <coughs> here yep. in london but in space yes, <laughs> it's exactly. just a lot of rockets yes and then you would probably see floating in space some kind of source of energy like solar yeah potentially so earth would just look more on the surface more um technological and then then you would use the power of that energy then to preserve the natural yes like the rainforest and all that exactly, kind of stuff. Because for the first time in, in human history, we wouldn't be uh, resource constrained. Mm -hmm. And I think that could be amazing new era for humanity where it's not zero sum, mm -hmm. right? I have this land, you don't have it. Or if we take, you know, if the tigers have their forest, then the, the local villagers can't, what are they going to use? I, I think that this will help a lot. No, it won't solve all problems because there's still other human uh, foibles that will, will, will still exist, but it will at least remove one, I think, one of the big vectors, which is scarcity of resources, you know, including land and more materials and energy. And, um, we, you know, we should be, some of us call it like, and others call it about this kind of radical abundance era where um, there's plenty of resources to go around. Of course, the next big question is making sure that that's, fairly, you know, shared fairly, uh, and everyone in society benefits from that.